On December 16th, I set out on a road trip alone to my mom's house for Christmas. I always tried to take a new route to get there, and my first stop was to pay a visit to an old American road trip icon in Southern California. You probably know them as the Cabazon Dinos, and uh, most notably, they're famous for being in Pee Wee's Big Adventure, the movie, which I have not had the pleasure of watching. I was really surprised to see the businesses around the dinosaurs. Well, actually, I was not surprised. The businesses were trashed. I didn't expect anything less from California. This one's boarded up. This one's boarded up. It was a rather cold and windy day, so I checked it out for five minutes and then decided to go inside the gift shop, buy myself a sticker to remember it, because I'll probably never see it again. Being that I'm going into the RV industry, I made sure to drive through the famous Quartzsite, Arizona. It's world famous for being the snowbird destination for all people, no matter the social class. Here we see tents, cars, vans, trucks, trailers, fifth wheels, class C's, B's, A's, all out here for a good time. Sticking it to the man and not having to work. Or being bums, depending on how you see things. Me? I like them. People found freedom to live life on their own terms, whether it's just for a few weeks or the rest of their lives. I can appreciate that. It's bare essentials they have, and yet they make it out here every year from wherever they come from. I can appreciate the nomads. I feel I belong out here with them, but I like to explore. Other notable facts, the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous, an annual gathering of van dwellers, takes place in January. Nine major gem and mineral shows and 15 general swap meet shows are very popular tourist attractions attracting about 1.5 million people annually, mostly during January and February. So if you believe none of what I just said, all you have to do is drive through the Ming Dragon town and see that everything is catered towards these RV, van dwellers, nomads, whatever you want to call them. The snowbirds of Quartzsite, everything is catered to you. You have RV spots, RV stores, RV repair places, Everything is for RVs. Whole town's economy revolves around just these two months. I wonder how many people actually live out here full time. I wonder if they're happy. Continuing on. Did stop in Jerome, a very quaint, Instagrammable mining town with a spotty and spooky history dating back to the 19th century. It had more than 10,000 people at one point when the copper mines were booming. They did close in 1953, and after that, the population dwindled into the hundreds. But then there's the Grand Hotel, which is haunted. Staff, as well as guests, frequently report bedside table lamps and televisions being unplugged, shampoo bottles rolling across the floor or flying across the room. The sound of doors opening and closing while the room is otherwise vacant are common. Guests have found electronics such as cell phones and camcorders dead center beneath the bed. Front desk staff particularly the graveyard shift, have reported hearing coughing and sneezing from the hotel's laundry room, seeing shadows in the same area of whom they believe to be Claude Harvey, the hospital's maintenance man who was found dead on April 3rd, 1935, pinned beneath the Otis elevator, presumably murdered. It also mentions close to 9,000 deaths took place over the decades-long run the building was used as a hospital. So that's pretty interesting. Then I drove through Sedona, Arizona, and nothing to see there, just some rocks. Just kidding, it was very beautiful. On the stretch of road I wanted to take, there was an old man who looks like his other part-time job was checking receipts aggressively at the Walmart checkout line. So I decided to pass through, hoping to reach Horseshoe Bend instead while the sun was up. This section of the drive was actually very beautiful, and I listened to Team Impala for most of the drive. It was very gorgeous. I would do it again. Conveniently, I stopped in Page, Arizona, only to realize the sun was setting and Horseshoe Bend closes at sunset. So it's 5.30, and I just got here. Sunrise to sunset only. Here we are at sunset. I am not able to enter. I'm really sad about that. I slept at a campsite near Monument Valley that I rented on Airbnb. I woke up early, because I was cold, to make coffee, only realizing then that mistakes were made. Unable to produce my own caffeine, I found some 45 minutes away at a gas station and proceeded to Monument Valley. It was cloudy 
and I mean cloudy and foggy, no visibility at 8 a.m. I continued on to Shiprock, New Mexico, hoping to be in awe of the mighty Navajo lands. I found myself following two track roads off a highway, half mud, half horse poop. I was unfortunately blinded by fog. I wasted two hours trying to track into this freezing, muddy, barren land, but I was unable to pass deep mud after trying two different paths. Next time. I am a little bummed because even on the way to Shiprock, it looked like there was path closed, there was mud, a few ruts I wasn't willing to do, and then, you know, I took a different path and another set of just straight deep mud. And I was skeptical. I think I could have done it if my life depended on it, but it's not worth the risk because I will have a bad day if I get stuck out here because there's nothing. There's nothing. As much as I really think I can do it and I want to do it, I'm just going to say no because I know myself. If I get stuck, I'm going to be so mad because <laughs> that would not be fun waiting out here for somebody to find me. For one, it's cold. I have extra gas, but I have half a tank. It just, it's not a good idea. Not a good idea. I decided to top off the already failed trip with the drive through America's shining star of a city, Albuquerque, New Mexico. I made it through the Navajo Nation evading all the non-sober drivers. That wasn't good enough. I was out to dodge bullets, if I could. I stopped at a few famous places you might recognize from the popular show Breaking Bad with some of my extra time. So I looked up the worst hoods in Albuquerque and it says Quigley Park, where I've basically just arrived as the worst one. But I think it might be incorrect because this looks pretty normal. This is like not dangerous at all. This is chill. What is this? All right, in a turn of events, we're gonna go to the War Zone, which is the international district here in Albuquerque, and uh, let's go check it out. Let's follow my man with no bumper here and uh, see where he takes us. All right, made a right turn onto Louisiana Boulevard, and we're two minutes away from the War Zone. I'm gonna pick a street and just drive down it. Uh, it already starts to look pretty rough, so let's go investigate. All right. Domingo Road. Sweet, we already got some action here. I don't know what this is, but it's like some type of accident. All right. Can't say it's the most welcoming neighborhood I've ever seen, but That's a little sketch. <laughs> the way all of those people were sitting in that car. Oh my God. Let's go right. All right, let's check this out. Now this looks interesting. Not that it's interesting, but it's just, wow. That's pretty bad conditions. This guy looked like he was stealing part of that fence. We're gonna go straight. I wonder if there could be some any opportunity here for the real estate, straight dog. Being that a lot of it looks pretty bad. It could be repaired, gentrified, if you will, depending on who you ask. We got Outlaw Customs right here. <laughs> All right, now it's businesses. Of course, we get some other uh, people out for a walk this afternoon. Yeah, this is just this little isolated part. I have never seen any of this before. And the rest of what I've driven through does not look like this. This is different. But I'm unsure. So we're gonna go through here. Pretty rough. Thankfully we have uh, 
a police presence there with a generator or solar panel and some cameras. Can't say I felt a little safer with that there, but it's there. Wow. Look at all that trash, man. I'm just gonna clean all that up. This looks like businesses. I don't know if they're open or closed, but all right, we're gonna go this way. Oh, wow. It gets worse. It's nice to see some people are decorating for Christmas, so at least somebody is festive amongst all the chaos and rowdiness. I mean, this is uh, not good. Sad. All right, we made it through the war zone, or part of it at least. This is not good. I still find it just mind boggling. People are out here in the streets in the United States of America, the wealthiest, most free country, and we got people living in these conditions. But then again, we have a lot of services we offer people. How does this happen? It's sad. How are we gonna clean all this up? And when I say this, I mean the trash, the tents. How do we fix people who have made choices to live these lifestyles? Or by circumstance, they've acclimated to living these lifestyles, you know, and we don't want our kids to be living in the streets or living these rough lives, doing drugs, prostitution. I think everybody should have a right to live the way they want to live, but still, how do we fix that? I don't know, put it in the comments, guys. What do you think? More socialism? Are we giving people free stuff, free health, health care, free housing, free food, free resources? How long do we give it to them? Should we give it to them? Is there another way? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I don't see a direct answer to this. I like how in America we have 50 different states and 50 different approaches. And I've lived in different states where the perspective is bootstrap it, do it yourself. And I've lived in other states where there's more of a helping hand and a more socialist approach. I don't know if socialist approach is the right way to describe it, but there's a lot more resources to people uh, that are available. All right, so that'll be it for now. There's not really a whole lot else to show you guys after leaving the restaurant. It's just like any other place, uh, but definitely worth checking out. Um, I'm going to go camping now in a state park right outside El Paso in the morning. I'll check in with you guys when we go to Ciudad Juarez for breakfast. I have a three hour and 40 minute drive 